It's time now for an in-depth look at the global markets on this Tuesday. And for that, I'm joined on the line by Mr. Daniel Yu, global strategist at Kium Securities. Mr. Yu, thank you for coming on today. Thank you very much for having me today. So stocks on Wall Street started the week higher after positive comments from President Trump about the U.S. trade war with China. Uh, Korean stocks today, too, substantially higher. What's the story there and elsewhere in Asia? Right. Um, before the market rebounded, um, the market fell quite sharply on the last Friday because of the uh, Xi Jinping and Trump fighting over and raising tariffs. Um, and those kind of news were putting quite negative impact on the global equity market. Uh, but right after that, uh, over the me weekend, uh, President Donald Trump has said that, um, that the negotiation will be starting again. Uh, on, on Monday, the comments were much more clear that uh, China has contacted U.S. trade officials overnight to say that they wanted to return to the negotiating tables. So that kind of raised the possibility of the um, negotiation happening. Therefore, sentiment improved slightly. Uh, but uh, before uh, G7, uh, the Trump leaving for th from that, uh, he said that, that he will continue to do the uh, 250 billion Chinese products uh, tariff rate from 25% to 30% uh, will be actually happening. Uh, and uh, starting the September 1st, the tariff on 300 billion worth of goods will be not just 10 percent, but maybe it will go up to 15 percent. So still, there are quite a lot of things that uh, makes investors worry, particularly with this China-U.S. fighting over uh, on trade and uh, continuation retaliatory tariffs happening amongst these countries, uh, and, and that resulting into inflation and pressure, uh, which also results into the economic uh, possible recession. So uh, this is definitely affecting market to be quite volatile. Uh, but nevertheless, sentiment has improved slightly. So therefore, Kospi has increased, rose by 0.5%. Uh, Kostak was up 0.9%. Uh, and Nikkei was up 1%. Uh, and also China is rising uh, around 1.35% for Shanghai and 1.8% for Shenzhen. Well, staying with China, it was earlier this month that the Chinese yuan broke through seven against the dollar and is continuing to go up. What does this mean? And for other Asian currencies, how are they affected? Right. It's quite uh, perturbing to see the RMB depreciating to this much level. Um, we were anticipating that RMB should appreciate uh, as the Chinese government uh, increases the domestic consumption market, consumer market. Uh, and when you increase the domestic consumer market through the boosting measures, you need currency to appreciate in order for it to be less costly. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, Chinese government is letting the RMB to depreciate uh, as high as now 7.17 RMB to the dollar. Uh, that seems to be the record highest level ever. Um, now, this seems to be that in such that when Chinese government boosting the domestic consumer market, uh, they are allowing domestic players to win the market share rather than the foreign uh, players. Uh, and therefore, having the uh, Chinese corporations, the corporate earnings to quite jump through this kind of boosting measures, and the benefit uh, to the domestic boosting is not really going to the U.S. or any other global players. So that's the reason why I think the RMB uh, depreciation is still allowed. Uh, but nevertheless, in a longer term basis, if you continue to depreciate, then the capital outflow will make the uh, Chinese government very uncomfortable. So we do think that they will start to uh, somewhat intervene in terms of the currency depreciating too much. Uh, and meanwhile, if the revenue depreciates, then that is continued to be uh, negative news for Korean one as well, meaning the Korean one will depreciate accordingly as the Korea have higher relationship with China. Uh, while uh, U.S. putting pressure on many other countries, uh, renminbi depreciation is not making Japanese yen to depreciate. Uh, rather, uh, it seems that the U.S. pressure is making Japanese yen to appreciate, uh, which is quite negative news for the Japanese exporters. Um, the, so the currency war is here, and everybody is watching out for what kind of the liquidity injection, the rate cuts will be happening over the next several months. 
Got it. Well, uh, lastly, real quick, uh, bonds, another complicated subject. Uh, Korean 10-year bond rate's been uh, quite low for a couple of months. What's happening here? Yes, 10-year uh, bond rate is at 1.22%. Three years rate is 1.12%. Uh, and the call rate, the government call rate, is at 1.25%. So clearly, it's an inverted yield curve. Uh, clearly, everybody's worried about the long-term future of economic growth for Korea, uh, which is coming in at only one and a half, one, one mid one percent level. Uh, man, maybe many people are expecting this will continue. Uh, obviously, uh, we need further rate cut at least by 25 basis points further. Uh, on Thursday, I think there's a uh, monetary policy meeting, so hopefully to see the rate cut happening. We'll be watching for that for sure. All right, Mr. Yu, we'll leave it there today. Thank you for sharing your insights. Thank you very much.